Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the end of my course for graphing absolute value equations. Uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of summarize the process for graphing absolute value equations and then kind of go over some tips and tricks uh, that you can use as you kind of you know, work on this on your own as well as kind of some common mistakes that I've seen through myself as well as through my students. So first of all though I'd like to kind of re review kind of the process for solving absolute value equations. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're gonna, when we have an absolute value equation we're going to want to make sure it's first written in our um, transformation form, which is y equals a times um, bx minus h plus k. And then what we're going to do is identify which of those values do we have, a, a, b, h, and a k, and identify the transformations. How is my graph going to be shifting left or right, reflecting, um, compressing, everything else? So identify all those transformations. And then the next thing is, where is the vertex going to be? And the vertex is basically going to be from your transformations that you identify shifting left or right and shifting up and down. Once you identify the vertex, the next thing is to identify you know, what are going to be the other points. And if you do not have any compression or stretching, then you can just follow the pattern of a parent graph, which is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, over 3, up 3, and so on. But if you have a compression or a stretch, that means you have a value for A or B, the best thing that I like to do to be full sure, or to be 100% sure you're grabbing it correctly is to simply just create a table. And when you create a table, you're going to want to choose two points to the right um, or to the left of your vertex. And then you, you evaluate for those points to find the x and the y coordinate that are going to be, that's going to create your um, part of one half of your graph. And then use the axis of symmetry of the absolute value function to reflect over the graph. Because the absolute value function, you know, is that v-shaped it's reflective about um, the axis of symmetry that goes through the vertex. Now, some kind of tips and trips, uh, tips and tricks. So I get a lot of students that can identify the transformations, but things that they forget is what were all their transformations. Most commonly, like reflecting, they just kind of forget. They, for, they lose it. So when you're right, identifying the transformations, write them down. If you're shifting the graph three units to the right, Right, shift, three units, right, okay? Write down those transformations. So one, you can always check your work, make sure you didn't do it, make sure you did it correctly. And two, you don't forget those things because it's bound to happen. I've done it many times. I know students do it. Um, so that's, you know, very helpful him. The next thing, for all functions and equations, ladies and gentlemen, you can easily create an input, an input and an output table of values. Whatever your equation is, determine values for x, and determine values of y and plug them in to identify the graph. Now I will say, again, when going back to the table, make sure you're choosing points that are to the left and to the right of the vertex. Because if you only choose points that are to the left of the vertex and you don't know it, then you're just going to graph a straight line. But if you know that those points are all to the left of the vertex, then you can reflect them over the y axis or the axis of symmetry to graph them on the right side. So you make sure you have that v-shaped, right? If you're graphing an absolute value function using a table, or anyway, you know it's always going to be a v. But a lot of students get stuck and they don't know, you know, am I shifting left or am I shifting right? I don't know. Just plug in some points and see what where those values will lay because that's going to tell you where the graph's going to be. So if you thought it was shift left, but then you see your points are making actually making it shift right, you need to rethink and say, all right, where did I'm where am I, am I confused or did I make a mistake? Uh, some common mistakes, the horizontal shift. It gets students all the time. Remember, in this format, well, actually, let's do this format, y equals a times x minus h plus k. The common mistake is the vertex is h comma k. All right, so it's the value of k, and it's the opposite value of h. So if I have an equation y equals x you know, minus 3, it's x opposite of 3, x opposite of h. So x opposite of 3 means h equals 3. It gets even more confusing when I do x plus 2. Well, there's no negative there. But remember, an addition problem, we can rewrite this as x opposite of negative 2. So as I say, x opposite of h, x opposite of negative 2. That means h is equal to negative 2. All right. The last thing is a horizontal shift, a bx minus h. This gets a lot of students. The best thing I can just kind of tell you is anytime you have that b, that number is multiplying by your x, rather than h being a part of your vertex, it's gonna, you got to set whatever's inside of your function or inside your absolute value in, set it equal to 0, and then solve for x. All right. 
So their x equals h divided by p, h divided by b. So therefore, your vertex is really h divided by b comma k. So your new vertex, when you have it in this format, is h over b comma k, not h. So you've got to take into account uh, that b when you're identifying the vertex. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is kind of just your basic um, introduction to graphing absolute value equations. I hope you learned a lot, and I look forward to you in another course. Thanks.